In a deserted forest, a tall man shovels dirt into a hole. Not a word about this to anyone. I can't go to jail and leave my little island without any parents. The sun shines brightly as the pickup truck pulls to the side of a road. Here we are. Now remember, I love you, son, and you must work very hard. Now, I'm not gonna work hard. I'm gonna work smart, and I'll make you proud. Listen, Rylan, I want you to know, no matter what I did in my past, I always loved you, and I always will. Dad, I'm not dying. I'm going to college. Are you gonna be okay on your own? I'll be just fine. Now go on. Bye, Rai. Okay, bye then. Rylan steps into his dorm room. Blake? What are you doing in my dorm room? No way, Rai. I think we roommates. Wow, this is gonna be awesome. What are the odds of this? Well, we won't be able to be as loud as we usually are, and it kind of sucks that we don't have a TV. Then it's a good thing I brought my TV. And video games. Yeah, we're gonna get a lot of noise complaints. A few days later, Rylan is seated on the side of his bed. Hey Blake, how is class? Blake takes a seat on his bed, next to Rylan's. They sit across each other. Uh, it was just introduction stuff, but aren't you supposed to be in class? What are you doing here? I didn't go. I'm kind of worried about my dad. You still haven't heard back from him? That's not like your father. Ever since my mom left, it's just been my father and I. Whenever I'd be out, he'd check on me like crazy. I remember when we first started hanging out, we were like five, and he would message my mom constantly to ask about you. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna get a cab and chuck on him. No. Blake hands Rylan his car keys. Take my car and let me know when you get there, alright? Rylan walks into his house. Dad? I came home to check on you. Rylan sets his keys next to a fish tank on a table. He is probably asleep. I'll go check in his room. Rylan creeps down the hallway. He swings open a door. No. No, 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 no. Dad! Detective Jeffrey Burks requesting backup for potential suicide. 10 4, what's your 20? 27, Benton Road. 10 4, copy that. Requesting all available units to 27 Benton Road for potential suicide. Uh, Rylan stands by a police cruiser. A detective walks over to him. Hi there, I'm Detective Burks. I am sorry for your loss. Can you tell me if your father was showing any signs of suicidal thoughts? I... I... I don't know. Don't worry, kid. You'll get through this. Here, take my card. If anything comes to mind, give me a call. Actually, there is something. 
when he dropped me off to college. He called me by my name, which, which is something that he usually doesn't do. And, and then he said that he loves me, and that he, that he always will. It was just a bit odd. I thought nothing of it at the time. A tall and shaggy-head man approaches. Ryland, I came as soon as I got the call. I can't believe he's gone. <laughs> Uncle Henry! Did, uh, did you get the suicide note? <laughs> uh. How did you know about the note? I, uh, I just assumed most people leave notes. Hmm, well, okay, you guys are free to leave. Three days later, in Henry's cabin-styled house, Rylan is seated at a desk in his room. Hey, Blake. Bro, are you okay? How are you taking everything? I... I could be better. But Uncle Henry is letting me stay with him. Did you read the letter yet? I just can't bring myself to. How about you read it with me on the call? Uh... Sure, I'd like that. Dear Rylan, I, I am, am so, so sorry, sorry that I have, I have to leave you like this. But I've been feeling really down lately. After your mother died, I've never felt the same. So I hope to join her this way. Bye. I, I love, love you, you, kiddo. Rylan, you okay, man? Look, I, I was going over that day in my head, okay? And he had the gun in his right hand, but he's left-handed. So, you think someone else is responsible for his death? Dude, my uncle never cried when, he's, when his wife, who he loved more than anything in this world, when she died. He simply doesn't get emotional, but he did for my father. I never really liked your uncle, but is that the only reason you think he did it? The note says my mother died, but my father said she left when I was younger. And this handwriting? It, it isn't my father's. Can you tell whose it is? I can't. Um... Try and compare it to your uncle's writing. I think he had something on the fridge. If it's a match, I'm gonna call the detective. Sir, the handwritings are a match. Okay, listen, you need to get out of the house. Take the note and your uncle's grocery list. I'm on my way. Ryland shuffles to the door with the papers in hand. <laughs> oh, kiddo, now is about to knock. Say, do you know what happened to my grocery list? Uh, no. I never saw it. Henry's gaze falls on the papers in Ryland's hand. His face turns expressionless as he locks eyes with Rylan. You're a smart kid. A very, very smart kid. But for both of our sakes, hand me the suicide note. I'm meeting up with Blake to read it. I gotta go. <clears throat> Rylan tries to move past Henry, but he shoves him into a wall. Now that tells me something. That you will try everything to turn me in. And I can't let that happen. Why? Why did you do it? Well, it's pretty simple actually. When you were six years old, your mom, dad, and I went on a camping trip. There was a little accident, and your mom died. The police would have surely put us in jail for it. So your dad and I, we buried her body. After he sent you off to college, he said that you're not a little child anymore, and you can live independently. So he wanted to turn us in. And I couldn't afford to go to jail back then, and I can't afford to go to jail now. 
Lucky for you, jail is free. Suddenly, Detective Burks appears behind him and points a gun to the back of his head. Now, get on the ground and put your hands above your head. In a sudden motion, Henry whips around and knocks the gun out the detective's hand. <coughs> Henry throws a low punch, but Detective Burks blocks it, then counters with a kick to his ribs. <coughs> The kick sends Henry crashing into a mirror. He lands flat on his stomach. He pulls out handcuffs. Henry Valmontre, I am placing you under arrest for the murder of Hector Valmontre. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be provided. Do you understand these rights as I have read them? The next day, sunlight shines over a fountain where Rylan and Blake are seated. Man, I'm sorry that you went through all that. I'm just glad it's all over. Are you sure you feel alright to be at college though? Yeah, I just want to focus on my studies and make my dad proud. With all that happened, he only had my best interests in mind, so I still love him. He and my uncle were the only family I had. Hey. You still have me, bro. That means a lot. Oh, that reminds me. I talked to my mom, and you can have the guest room. So during the holidays and after college, you can come stay with me. Mi casa es su casa. No way. Thanks, bro. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. Yeah. Anyway, now for the real reason I brought you to the fountain. What? Blake dips something into the fountain. <laughs> ah, come on, you got me all wet. Take that, you evil necromancer. Do you even know what's a necromancer? Nope. <laughs> <laughs>